Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Anita Newby and today I am going to be reviewing another movie for you. Today I am looking at the movie Nomadland. It has won several awards which we'll get into a little later but I finally had the chance. I mean not that I didn't have the chance before. I took the time to actually watch the movie and I'm going to be sharing my thoughts for you. It is available streaming now on Hulu and in some places it's showing in theaters so stay tuned for my review of Nomadland. All right, let's get into it. No Mad Land. Okay, this film, as I said, is streaming on Hulu, and I uh, took the time to watch it. Uh, just a little while ago. It had been on my radar for quite some time. Anytime a movie is nominated multiple times in multiple categories, it definitely piques my interest. Not because I'm a person who has just goes with the flow and whatever the critics say I believe or whatever, you know, the Academy says um, I agree with. Not necessarily so, but when something is consistently nominated for so many awards, there has to be some value to it, okay? That's my take on it. So I was really interested in this movie. I want to say, I could be incorrect, but I want to say this movie has been nominated so far for over 100 awards, over 100 awards. As we know, at the time that I am filming this, the Oscars have not come out yet. I predict that uh, it will win for best director of the Oscars, um, you know, um, just based on the pattern of things that have happened so far. But it has won the Golden Globe for best film. Best Director, uh, I believe Best Screenplay, but there's something else that it won for as well. And uh, it, it to me, that says a lot. It might not carry any weight with a lot of people, but to me, that says a lot. And I know a lot of times when we're looking at the award shows, I know a lot of people you sometimes become disgruntled because people are like, well, they're always nominating these movies that we've never heard of, and this is not even popular, and what about this movie? It was so good and it was so popular. But popular doesn't necessarily mean that the quality is high. Like, McDonald's french fries are popular, right? But we all know that's not really quality food. <laughs> no shade to McDonald's fries. They have like 100 ingredients. I'm exaggerating, but really, it has a ridiculous number of ingre ingredients to be french fries. Nevertheless, they're popular, but that doesn't mean it's high quality. And sometimes we think because something has widespread popularity, it's high quality. But sometimes it is those things that are rare, that are unique, that are really of value and, and quality. So I wanted to check out this film, Nomadland. That was my long commentary on why I wanted to check it out. And I liked this film. I totally understand why it won for Best Director. I do understand why it won for Best Film. I haven't seen a lot of the others in that category, but I understand from a filmmaking perspective, this is a very, very high quality film. Very, very high quality film. I wanna take a few minutes and talk about the director, uh, Chloe Zhao. She is the director of this film. She won the Golden Globe for Best Director and it is well-deserved. From a directorial standpoint, this film is brilliant. There are so many shots. If you haven't seen the film and you plan to see the film, just note how many shots there are in the film. It's unbelievable. As I was watching the film, I kept thinking, and that's another shot, that's another shot. Even within the same scene, there's such a variation, there's such a, a huge landscape of what is being shown and demonstrated this. And the director's eye of Chloe Zhao is amazing. When I tell you that she is one to watch, I mean, she she's already... Uh, made some other films. She usually does independent films. She's already made some other films that have, you know, uh, kind of made a mark, but she is one to watch. I believe she's under, under 40. So she's got a long career ahead of her and I'm excited to see what she does next. She broke some ground uh, with this, with these, uh, recent wins that she's had. She's the first woman of color to win a, a few of the awards, maybe the Golden Globe for director, but I know some of the other awards that she she's won. She's the first woman of color, the first Asian woman to to win. And um, it's it's 
wonderful to see uh, women coming to the forefront and being featured and being valued for their contribution. If you look at films, women direct films very differently than men do, in my opinion. And that's good. We need the balance of both, right? I, we need a man's perspective and then we need a woman's perspective. This film in particular, I believe needed that feminine touch, that feminine eye to be told um, compassionately. Not saying that men don't have compassion. I'm, I don't mean to imply that. But the way it was just presented, and maybe that's just her personality. It may not have anything to do with her gender, but it was just presented in such a compassionate way. Now, I will tell you that this movie is based on a book, and the book is entitled Nomadland, Surviving America and the 21st Century. So let me tell you what it's about. I did all that talking. You might not even know what the movie's about. The movie's about a woman who uh, has been challenged by the Great Recession and kind of lost everything. So she has to take on this other lifestyle. She no longer has uh, the comforts of living in one place and having a steady stream of income. That's not her story anymore. And uh, it kind of goes through a lifestyle change that she makes and the people who, who mentor her through this lifestyle change. I will say this, the movie is based in fact, but the characters presented, the main character presented and her particular story is fictional. Um, and it, the main character, Fern, is played by Frances McDormand, who, in my opinion, is brilliant. I love to see her. I think she's very versatile. She can be funny. She can be comedic. She can be strong. She can be, you know, compelling. And this movie was very compelling. This is a lifestyle that I didn't have any clue existed. There are people who live in America and who are living this nomadic lifestyle, so to speak. And what happens, and there is such an authenticity to the telling of this story. And after watching the film, I thought, man, that was so just kind of raw. It was so genuine. And, and upon further exploration, I realized, yes, Frances McDermott was in the film and there's another popular actor in the film. But a lot of these people in the film are truly these nomads who were playing themselves in the film. So you always get a level of authenticity to that, you know, because what do actors strive for? Actors strive for uh, when they're on film to present themselves in a way that you don't feel like they're acting. So when you get people really playing themselves, that whole barrier, that whole wall, that whole thing of pretending is totally absent. And that's one of the reasons that it felt so genuine. Um, it has a documentary feel. It is not a documentary, but it has a documentary feel in the way that the story is told because you're just looking at events happening in her life. There's not one pivotal thing. There's not a resolution. There's not, you know, these certain things that we look for in a story, but this is a presentation of a lifestyle. And because I was totally clueless that this was even happening in America and that people were doing it for survival and by choice, I was really moved with compassion. I was really moved with empathy. I think one of the things that art has the ability to do if the person who is presenting the art takes on this challenge is to cause us to be empathetic in places that we may have not been empathetic before. You don't know, all you know as a, as a person living, all you know is your story. You know, you know the story of people around you who are probably generally in, in similar situations. But to see stories that are so outside of my reality is important for me as a, as a person because it gives me, it allows me to be compassionate. It allows me to be empathetic and it allows me to not be dismissive. It allows me to not be cruel and harsh when things are happening around me, let's say in the government or in society that I don't really understand. It helps me to not make judgments about a group or a classification of people based on what I believe. I don't, I don't have their same experience. So I really don't have a right to judge what they're dealing with or what they're going through. And what was powerful to me is that this film brought me into a world that I knew nothing about. When I say 100% clueless, I was 100% clueless. 
And after the film, I started looking some things up because I want to know when this happened and, and what was going on and how were these people dealing. These people uh, kind of were living, you know, they're, they're living in their vehicles collectively and they have come together and created a community. So what you see in this film is some of these real life people who really live like this were mentoring our fictional character Fern in the ways of the nomad and how to maneuver in this. What do you do? You know, they couldn't get steady employment anymore. And I know a lot of people are quick to just say, there's jobs available, just get a job. These people had tried and tried to get jobs and, and they couldn't. And um, it's they they took on seasonal employment and it talked about, you know, the strain it had on them physically. And what do you do when you come across a physical ailment, uh, you know, a, a life threatening physical ailment, but you don't have insurance to, to get help? What does this type of lifestyle look like to your family? How do other people perceive how you're living? You're trying to survive and do the best that you know how, but what is the perception? So I felt like this film was was an important story to be told and I, I hope people watch it and I hope people watch it with a compassionate and empathetic eye and that it lets them to see outside of the world that they live in every day. And that's kind of the main takeaway for me. Let me tell you, if you're looking for something that's full of action and excitement, this is not for you. This movie is slow paced. Slow paced doesn't mean it's wrong. Slow paced does not mean bad. You just have to be prepared for slow pace. That was one of the reasons that it took me so long to actually watch the film because sometimes I want to be entertained and I want excitement and I want a good story and I want a villain and I want a, a main character and, and it didn't have those things. So I made sure that I was in the mental space to understand that it was going to be a slow telling of a story, that it was going to be um, very thought provoking and thoughtfully presented. So I needed to be in the correct mind space to be able to appreciate the value of what was presented. And again, I do recommend the movie. Just make sure you're in the right mind space. If you're looking, you know, for a shoot 'em up movie, this is not it. And I love a good shoot 'em up movie. So don't get me wrong. Uh, it does tell the story, a type of story about a Western, um, is that the, yeah, like a, a Western story, people who are living in the West and what that looks like, uh, a different, t a modern take on cowboys, that type of thing. So it is a modern take on that. But again, I think the direction was just fantastic. I do know why she's won what she's won. I expect her to win the Oscar. If she doesn't, I'm going to be surprised, but I will also check out all the other films. I mean, and I thought it was an amazing piece of art. I liked it. Uh, is it my favorite movie? No, it's not because I kind of like a different type of movement and momentum in my movies, but I appreciate it. I mean, as, as a, as a film, as, in terms of quality, it's very high quality. The acting was good. And then bringing in these people who are not actors add, added such a genuineness and an authenticity and a truth to this story that, that was just very compelling. Um, would I watch it again? Possibly. I need to be in the right mind space for it, uh, but I definitely appreciate it. Now, it's no parasite. Don't get me wrong. Like in terms of art, I think... Parasite is one of the best movies ever made. That's my opinion. If you haven't seen Parasite, it won last year the Oscar for Best Foreign Film, Best Picture, Best Director. And I mean, Parasite takes you on a journey. I'm not going to do a discussion about Parasite because I was... I was so enthralled. Maybe I'll come back and do a throwback Thursday or something and talk about that. But again, just want to be give respect to this movie and to the people who are living... Uh, this out, the people who are surviving America uh, in the 21st century the best way that they can, uh, doing it in community. And I think that was one of the important messages was the importance of community. I think in this time, in this season that we're in, when I'm filming this, it is April, 2021. And we have been in an interesting season for the past year in terms of being in a pandemic. And I think one of the things that we've lost for multiple reasons is a sense of community. One, one reason because we've been socially distant, a lot of us, and another reason is that we just don't seem to have a genuine concern about each other, you know, which is challenging. So it was refreshing to see that in the midst of 
very challenging situations that these people still cared about each other, still took care of each other, still, uh, you know, thought to consider one another. And I think that's a lesson that we can all take away from this movie. So again, those are my thoughts on Nomadland and just, um, and watch out for Chloe Zhao. She is amazing and she still has a great career ahead of her. So anything else, now she's a director that at this point, anything else she puts out, I'm gonna wanna see because of her take. Cinematically, I think there's it's been nominated for some awards for best cinematography. Oh, some of the shots from behind, some of the landscapes are very beautiful. To get a beautiful picture when the main focus of that picture is not beautiful, is powerful and she did it in a very beautiful way. So just wanted to throw that out there. Uh, Nomad Land, again, available on Hulu and you can watch it and, and still in theaters at some point, but I hope you will watch this film and enjoy and kudos hats off to the director and the storyteller of this film. Thank you so much uh, for watching. If you've watched thus far and have not yet subscribed, please click all the appropriate buttons so that you can be notified as well when I upload a new review, which I try to do every Monday. Thank you for tuning in and hold tight. I will have more reviews coming for you soon. Have a great day and thank you for watching.